Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're out here today. Um, been some questions asked about the chicken plucker after the last video. This is a homemade chicken plucker that I used. Um, the plans actually came from Whizbang. Now I, I used some of their plans. This is not all their plans. Some of it I put my own thoughts into and added my own touches to. But this was basically just a blue 55 gallon drum that I used. I cut the top off of it. Um, Whizbang gives you the measurements and tells you how to do it. I um, built the wooden frame. Whizbang gives you all the measurements for that. Uh, that tells you how many bolts you need at what lengths and all that kind of stuff. I actually built the frame. I cut the barrel out just like it said to. Cut the holes where it said to. They give you the formulas to figure for the uh, chicken pluckers. Uh, there's four sets of them around in here. It tells you how to use your circumference and how to measure the distances and to actually drill these three quarter inch holes in these. Now, I ordered the chicken pluckers from, uh, I think it was Amazon or Walmart, one or the other. And guys, let me tell you something. Before you even start this project, you just as well go ahead and get you a big giant set of channel lock pliers because Whizbang has <laughs> kind of has a comical thing in it there that says, look, the first thing you want to do is like hit your hand with a hammer and drop something on your foot and all that. Then you'll be in the right frame of mind to actually put these chicken pluckers in this thing because it is hard. There is some 150 of them inside this one that I built. It took me probably over a week just to put them in there because they're that hard to put in. Now in the bottom of this, I custom built a steel plate. Now you can actually order this plate from Whizbang, uh, but I was trying to save money. I cut. I had a uh, went to a steel fabrication place and actually bought a piece of metal. Come home, cut it myself. I uh, drilled all the holes myself. Actually, taking the circumferences, it gives you the measurements at Whizbang. I drilled all my own holes and installed the fingers myself. Probably that was the hardest. The hardest thing of the whole deal was installing the fingers in that steel plate. Now, one of the things you have to realize about a chicken plucker is that center part down there cannot turn over 150 RPM. If it does, it will actually beat the skin off of the chicken. I mean, just it'll pulverize it. So you want to make sure that that center part doesn't turn more than 150. 140 is better. 130, 140 is actually better. Um, you can actually buy electric motors that turn at that speed, but now I did not have an electric motor that turned at that speed. The only electric motor I had without having to go buy an electric motor was one that turned 3,700 RPMs that came off of an air compressor. So after doing the math and figuring out, looking at some formulas, I built a transmission for this thing. Now I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to show you the transmission that's underneath it and what I've done and what it looks like. Uh, and how, how this actually come together. Now I'm going to get this thing turned over. It's extremely heavy. That's another thing I want to mention. This thing probably weighs uh, 150 pounds or more. Now what we have here, this is a motor off of an air compressor. Uh, I like it because it has a startup capacitor on it, which I think is a, is, is a good deal to have on an engine. Uh, this one's got a few spider webs on it from sitting here. But knowing that that was a 3700 RPM engine, I took a two inch pulley on it and I went to another size pulley here. Then I done the math. I went from here to here to this size and I built a transmission system here. I bought two pillar block bearings and uh, mounted them here on this two by six. And by the way, all this framework is treated material so I don't have to worry about it rotting. I mounted it here. I went from a large pulley to a very small pulley again. And from this small pulley, I cut a one inch shaft and had it put in the bottom of this and mounted to the bottom of that steel plate. And I bought another set of pillow block bearings and mounted them on here. Now there's two different kinds of pillow block bearings here. This one is a surface mount and this one uh, mounts up on its side. Once I got the pillow block bearings in the center of this and I uh, got the one inch shaft put in, I, I cut my own keyway in it and bought some key stock and put in it. And I found the right size pulley that I needed to 
get my RPM down by doing the math. And I realized once I'd done that, that I had to go and I had to buy belts myself. I had to figure the lengths of these belts out. Now there was no way that I was going to find a belt that was exactly the right length from here to here, so I built an idler tension pulley here. And all that consists of is just simply a, a, a gate hinge right here, a piece of treated 2x, um, an idler pulley off of an old lawnmower deck with a bolt running through it, and a, a spring off of a storm door with an eye hook in here mounted so that this thing keeps tension on this. And then when that tension's staying on it, it keeps this belt from slipping underneath here. That way I didn't have to have an exact perfect size belt which I had trouble finding. So that's what I've done with that. And then I, this here is in the whiz bang thing. These are two wheels off of a, uh, of a, like a Home Depot type rack system that you push around in the store. A friend of mine had bought a bunch of them at an auction and I got two of the wheels from him and I just took a piece of regular three quarter inch pipe, put in between them, run a half inch rod through it which fit the wheels perfectly and, and mounted them on here so I had something other to roll it around with. Now you want the frame of this to stick down just a little bit lower than the wheels are and Whizbang will tell you that so that when you stand it up on the ground it's not sitting on the wheels, it's actually sitting on this on a hard surface up here. So that's a little bit about the transmission system in it. Um, okay, now what I have here is I took a piece of flashing off of a roof and I made a shield to go over the motor here because when water is spraying around, you don't want water getting on the electric motor even though this one is sealed and water cannot get in the top of it. I thought it best to keep it off of the belts and the pulleys and everything and the motor. I put this on here. Whizbang doesn't say anything about that. I actually took a piece of 12-2 wire because that motor requires a lot of electricity to run. You can't run it on a small cord. So I took a 12-2 with a ground. I took several feet of it and I actually I built me some little brackets here out of garage door hanger stuff. I wrapped it around it mounted me a plug-in on the end of it, a 110. I come up here and ran it into this PVC system, silicone that real good where water couldn't get into it. Bought a waterproof uh, switch system where I can switch it on and off. It's all waterproof because of the amount of water that's going here for safety purposes. This way I can set this thing up and, I'm, and I can be a long way away from my plug-in and still have enough cord to reach where it's plugged in at. Now I also on my own added this watering system here. Now this is PEX tubing. I just simply took a piece of PEX, um, the hot water one they call it, just the red. Uh, it'll actually work for cold either one. I bought the PEX fittings and, and put this thing together. I bought the electrical clamps and I just mounted this thing around in the top of it and took a drill with the uh, eighth inch holes. I drilled some one eighth inch holes all around the bottom of this at an angle shooting down in here. Came out the side here, went back here and added this myself where you can hook a garden hose to this end here. And I took a regular faucet like goes on the house, a quarter turn faucet. You can still see there's water in it. And I bought a coupling system to go on it so that two uh, Male ends can be screwed together with these female ends here. There's two females on this coupling so I can screw a water hose onto it. I can turn this off, turn the thing on, get it going, throw the chicken in there and then I can turn this and when I do the water starts shooting in there instantly, washing the feathers out and what that does is, is over here, this was not in the whiz bang system. This is something that I added in myself. Um, I, I made a, a metal chute system to go here because with the metal plate is just a little bit narrower than the drum is and it allows the feathers to come on the outside and I put the metal plate so that the feathers could be shot down and put inside a container down here. Um, that's something that um, I didn't see in the whiz bang thing. I just added this on my own because I felt like that uh, that would be a better deal. Like whiz bang just has them falling out on the ground here. And, and I kind of liked putting it in a chute system like this. It, it seemed to work out better for me. 
whiz bang had the opening there uh, and the thing for the feathers to come out they just didn't have this metal chute on it so I added the metal chute myself and you do have to be a little cautious because when you walk around you don't want your leg bumping it right here or something and cutting you or anything like that so guys, this is not an easy build. If you're looking for something that's extremely easy to do, uh, for the price, that well, there's around $700 in this one right here. Um, if you're not real mechanically inclined and have a lot of good building skills, I really would recommend you just go buy them because now they have them where they're factory made. They're not that expensive anymore. If you're gonna spend $700 building one, you might as well just spend a few hundred more dollars and go ahead and get a factory built one. But this was a challenge for me and I like challenges and I do have the mechanical skills and the ability to build this type of stuff. And for me here at the, at the homestead, it gave me another project to do that I love to do. Works perfect, we have no problems with it. Um, the only thing we see is occasionally if we put too many chickens in it, like say four of them at a time, sometimes it doesn't want to spin as fast as it should. One of the belts slips just a little bit uh, but other than that, if we keep like two chickens at a time, it works perfect. Just a matter of anywhere between five and ten seconds, all the feathers are gone off of them if you dip them properly. And um, I might even add that Whizbang even has a scalding thing that you can make out of an old hot water heater. So you can look that up also if you wanted to build that. Um, but guys, that's a little bit about the chicken plucker and how y'all saw us use it on the video. That's some of the info on what it took to build it. Uh, if it's something you think you might want to do, check out Whizbang. Order the book and um, be prepared to do a lot of work. So thank you from Deep South Homestead. Okay, guys, we're going to show you kind of how the chicken plucker works. We're going to turn it on here. See the inside part of it there it rotates. And then we turn this on and shoot the water down in on the, uh, the chickens, washes them off. And this is where all of our feathers and water and all comes out at. Uh, it's never a clean mess over here. It's always kind of, you know, it's always going to be a little dirty on this side. So one thing you have to contend with when you're plucking chickens.